The dune shacks of Province down in Truro float on dreamlike clouds of shifting sand, but living out in this Sahara by the sea is no walk in the park. It takes somebody half crazy to really want to be out here for any length of time, I'd say. Access is difficult. A good four-wheel drive with deflated tires is the only way to get supplies in. Rainwater is collected in pickle barrels, though some shacks have wells. It's a little bit salty. We have it tested periodically. Most of the dune shacks don't even have access to the beach. The park has closed it off all summer due to nesting birds. And then there is the endless digging. The ground underfoot in constant restless motion. It is naive for them to think that somebody who's not familiar with this place would have an easy time of taking care of a shack, which I think even the families that have been out here for 50 years still struggle with. Andrew Clemens' family has summered at the Grail since the 70s. For years, his father, Peter, a painter, owned the Backshore Gallery in Provincetown, where he featured work created out in the shack. We've been through, I think we're up to six or seven superintendents. Dune dwellers have weathered a number of political storms over the years, but the recent request for proposal, or RFP, put out by the park inviting bids on the shacks was the equivalent of an earthquake. Peter and Marianne Clemens were here last month when rangers from the National Seashore trucked in prospective bidders, an open house for what Clemens considers his house. We had no say in it. We didn't, couldn't pick the date. We couldn't say no. If we did say no, we were told we would be eliminated from our home of 50 years if we did not let people come out. This place takes experience, this environment. Without it, you, you know, me calling for help a lot. Paul Tasha and his family are as Provincetown as it gets, renowned as fishermen and fine artists with a wild streak. Since 1960, the Tashas have been custodians of what's likely the most historic shack, the Kemp Shack, named for Harry Kemp, known as the poet of the dunes. And it was only offbeat people who wanted to come out here. I mean, I heard it a million times, where do you want to go out there for? There's nothing out there. Harry Kemp, author of Tramping on Life and sometimes called the original beatnik, lived off and on in this shed for 40 years. He passed the shack on to the Tashas after they took him in when he fell ill. Now the National Seashore has determined the Tashas' time is up and put the humble shack out to bid. No water, no outhouse, and no limit on how high the bids can be. Honestly, it's, that's one of the most sickening parts, is I gotta pay taxes to give this, pay this guy's salary to screw me. Among the criteria the park will use to judge applicants will be ability to maintain the shacks, experience with challenging environments, and financial resources. But the RFP also contains language that makes seasoned dune dwellers like Romolo Del Deo wonder if some remote bureaucrat wrote the rules. If you look on their website, they have a sort of bullet point list of how to take care of a shack. It's like five steps. It's, it's ugly comedy is what it is. It's, it's no relationship to reality. For example, the shacks will be off limits to the new leaseholders in the wintertime when Atlantic storms are at their fiercest. Like any harsh environment house, you can't not come out during the winter. That's crazy. Like, there's going to be damage. And you got to get out there quick, or it goes from a, a toothache to a root canal to a crown. But they don't know. They just have no idea what it takes. Andrew Clemens is puzzled by the RFP's restriction on open flames. He learned how to read out here by candlelight and kerosene lantern. That's part of the, the dune check experience. You can't just flip on a light. That's what makes it so great. You can't just flick, flick on a light. That's why these places are so wonderful. It's hard for me to, to fathom who came up with that concept because it's part of the way of life here. 
And the dune dwellers that we spoke to were shocked to receive the notice to vacate letters that they got earlier this year. Right, they've been getting these one year special use permits for years mm -hmm. with, they say, the understanding that at some point they would get a longer term agreement because that's in keeping with the seashore's stated goal of preserving the cultural and historic identity of the area. So they are as shocked mm -hmm. as can be. Coming up, the case for reclaiming the shacks and expanding public access.